Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 3rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start out by catching up about some of the diaries published over the weekend. Jan published on Friday a diary about the use of the X-Frame options header and the respective content security policy option frame ancestors. So the big difference between the two is that first of all, the X-Frame options header is being obsoleted. It's still supported in current browsers, but maybe going away. The CSP frame ancestors is the more modern way of doing it. It is widely supported. And unlike X-Frame options, you're able to specify specific origins that are allowed to iframe your page. So what are the results? Well, Jan looked at the top 1,000, 100,000, and 1 million domains. It looks pretty sad. I'm actually a little bit surprised that the top popular domains are more likely having either header. I would expect that they may intentionally allow more iframing than some of the less popular sites, but well, it appears that uh, as with many security features, more popular, larger sites, of course, with more resources are implementing more of these security features. And then we got an update from Didi for its Oli dump tool. Well, it's now supporting MSI files. MSI files, the uh, Microsoft installer files, of course, that's what you typically use to install software on Windows. Uh, they are OLE files and well, uh, now uh, they are natively supported by OLE dump for analysis. It's of course a common delivery format these days also uh, for malware, which is why Diddy added this and he has a little walkthrough how to use uh, this tool with MSI files. And then of course, well, uh, 3CX is still in everybody's mind, that big supply chain compromise of a voice over IP company uh, last week. If you missed the off by one live stream with Steve Sims on Friday, a link uh, can be found in Friday's uh, show notes. But overall, there isn't really a ton of new information at this point. Uh, 3CX has published a few updates, uh, mainly evolving around their Electron app. They're highly suggesting that you should no longer use that Electron app. They have two options for you. One is a web browser based app. That's sort of the one they are going to steer users to in the future. They also still have what they're considering a legacy application for Windows. This application is a couple of years old, uh, of course, way before the compromise. So it should be safe. And that's if you can, for whatever reason, not use the web-based application. It's not clear if that legacy app will be updated now, given that they're sort of moving away from Electron, but I think it's still really too early uh, to uh, guess uh, what's going to happen going forward here. Also, no additional details about the nature of the compromise. Another wrinkle to this came in on Friday. Uh, Google invalidated the software security certificate used by 3CX. So if you're downloading the MSI desktop application using Google Chrome, it will be marked as uh, not signed and you won't be able to launch it. So if you get a message from Google Chrome that the EXE that you're downloaded is dangerous, the reason may be just the invalid signature, not that you download a malicious version of the application. Of course, that makes things a bit more complicated for users of 3CX software. And a Chinese shopping app Pinduoduo apparently attempted to use privilege escalation exploits on the Android platform in order to learn more about competing apps running on the same phone and also do extensive tracking of users. 
This comes, of course, at the same time where we have a lot of talk about uh, TikTok. Now, Pinduoduo is not really used in the United States. All the activity that was here sort of suspicious from the app does not point to any sort of nation state interest, but really more sort of commercial interests from Pinduoduo itself. Pinduoduo is the largest shopping app in China, uh, not really popular at all outside of China. However, more recently, an online shopping shopping site called Timo, which is uh, linked uh, to Pinduodu, has been sort of uh, advertising more, at least here in the United States, and also has been one of the top downloaded apps, which of course then also focused uh, more attention uh, to their apps. The affected version attempted to exploit about 50 Android system vulnerabilities. Now, after uh, this was pointed out to uh, Pinduodu, they released a new version of the application which had these features removed and apparently also at least part of the development team for their mobile app has been disbanded since then. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.